is what we are going to be hearing throughout this week. It's a message about heaven. And heaven is real. Beloved of the Lord, heaven is real. So throughout this week, please make sure you tune in to the convention that is going to be holding from tomorrow to Sunday. And the Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. The Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And the name of the Lord will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to appreciate every one of us that have joined us during the festival of prayers. And um, I know that one way or the other, the Lord will administer to you. And all the prayer that you have prayed, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. I said, the Lord will answer in Jesus' precious name. I will just take, add a little to, you know, today is the seventh day of our seven days program. And uh, we have seven days prayers. Seven pastors have been have led us. And um, we're going to have seven communion. So tonight we are going to be having seven communion. We are going to have the seventh communion by 7 p.m. But I just want to add a little to about the theme of this program is the new dawn. And for the past nine years, we've been having festival of prayers. And um, I invited one of my friends. Uh, he came from Nigeria. That time we used to have morning and evening. And by 6 a.m., we are here. During winter, that is so cold. <laughs> and um, when, the, when it remains three days, as everybody must go on an absolute fast. And uh, so after we finished the Saturday, the Lord told me, tell my children to go and eat. So I told him, I, I tell them that everybody, the Lord told me you should go and eat. You don't need to wait till tomorrow. Ah, he said, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and he's a pastor himself. He has joined us this week. He's an assistant regional pastor now. He said, Pastor, the cold and the fasting, ah, it's not easy. I know that so many of you have drank it this morning. Praise the Lord. I want to so but whatever it is, it is cold. But we will say we will not come to church because of it, it is cold. We know somebody told me, he said, you know, when it is winter, some people will take a break from church. And during December, they take a break from church. I thank God for your life that you have not taken a break from church. So I'm happy to see Brother Joshua today. You know, Brother Joshua is a pastor's son. <laughs> well, we thank God for Jesus Christ for every one of us. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ that have brought us together again. Let's look at the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 78 to 79. Luke chapter 1, verse 78 to 79. It says, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high had visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of it to guide our feet, into the way of peace. Let's look at the book of Romans. Or let's look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 147. Psalm 119, verse, we read from verse, we read verse 147. I anticipate the dawning of the morning and cried, I hope in thy word. I anticipated the dawning of the morning and cried, I hope in thy word. If you read verse 145, it says, I cry with my whole heart. 
Hear me, O Lord. I will keep thy statutes. I cry to thee, save me. And I shall keep thy testimonies. Father, bless your word, O Lord. Because you are the God of your word. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayer. The theme of this program of the Festival of Prayer is a new dawn. What is a new dawn? At night we sleep. To be dark, you sleep. And when you wake up around 4 a.m., you can hear cars moving. And when you come out, you see some people walking on the road. They are moving by between four to six. You see a lot of people moving. I drove to this church this morning around six o'clock. I saw some people moving. And I have to put on my full light because some people... Some people will even be driving without putting on their light. So you know that it is the dawning that it is getting to the day. The night is over. The day is coming. So we are talking about a new dawn. We are talking about a new morning. When the night is about to come to an end. So in a new dawn means a new beginning. The beginning of another day. A fresh start. That is, you are starting all over again. What is a new dawn? A new dawn can mean a promising turning point. What does that mean? You have been suffering for a long time. And suddenly, a day came that you now met one of your schoolmates. And he said, oh, how are you, my friend? I said, how are you, Joseph? He said, I'm okay. How? How has life been? You're not looking well. Uh, he said, yes. Um, since I graduated from school, I've not been able to get a job. Really? Do you have your CV? Say yes. Well, I know you are very you were very brilliant when we were in school. So I'll introduce you to one of my friends. And you got a call from somebody, and they said, Come and attend an interview. You go and you woke up in the morning, you dress up, and you got there, they interview you, and they said, Where do you want to start? He said, You are ready to start immediately. And that day you start working. That is a new dawn. The pain has been coming. The pain of unemployment. The pain of hunger. The pain of lack of accommodation. You don't have a house to live. You cannot feed your family. Your children could not go to school. But now when you get a new job, all those things we come, become a past tense. Why? In your new place of employment, you can say, please, sir, uh, I don't have money. Please, your salary is going to be 100,000 rand. He said, hey, 100,000 rand. You that you have not been able to afford 1,000. said, please, can I have 2,000 or 3,000 rand that you loan me to the end of the month? Say so, three thousand. We can afford to give you five thousand. When you are coming back home that day, you will buy cold drink. You will buy pap. You will buy chicken. And when you have little ones like my own at home, you will buy cake. So when you get home that day, your children will know that it is a new day. So, this program we have been going through for the past seven days is just telling us that whatever you have been going through in the past, now 
you will have a new experience. And the experience will bring praises unto the name of your God in Jesus' name. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That is, God is saying, our God who can do all things, our God who can do the impossible, our God who can change situations, our God who can change circumstances, say, I will do a new thing. That is, you will have a new experience from what you have been having before. You always, before, your, own, your income only depends on your salary. God is saying, I will open a new door. Before, you could predict what is going to come at the end of the month. God is saying, don't worry. I am the one that owns everything. I will open a new door for you and give you opportunity that at the end of the month, you will look back and say, where did I get all this money? Because God will do a new thing. So a new dawn means new things. God will do a new thing. I want you to help me tell your neighbor, God will do a new thing. Help me turn to another person and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. God will do a new thing. Let me look at another person and say, neighbor, God will answer your prayers. Let me look at another person and say, neighbor, God will help you. So, when God wants to do a new thing, he will send help to you. When God want to do a new thing, he will send somebody who will listen to you and he will re re be ready to do something that will put laughter in your mouth. So many of us have been going to bed with hunger. When God wants to do a new thing, God will provide food for you. So from today, you will no longer be hungry. From today, you have been homeless. You will no longer be homeless in Jesus' name. You know why you want to know that God is going to do a new thing? That was one day a few years ago. I went to preach there in Boulders. And I met a man who had been sleeping on the road, on, this, on the street. And I told him, are you not educated? He said, I'm educated. Then why are you sleeping on the road? And he told me his story. I have mercy on him. I have compassion on him. And I brought him here. I told him, I'm going to warm water for you. You go to that corner there. Go to one corner there. You go and bath. He took his bath. I went to go and buy food for him. He ate. And I told him, you know what? I'm going to leave you here overnight. You're not going to sleep on the street. So I took him to the one room up there. I locked the door here. And I left him here overnight so that he could sleep and he would no longer sleep on the street. And I asked myself one day, in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep. It was raining. Because the Lord told me in the morning that I should not allow him to sleep in the church anymore. Because God knew what he was going through. And the night, I went to go and look for him. My wife cooked food. I went to give to him in the night. When it was terribly cold. In the morning, I went to pick him. I brought him to my house. You can have a hot bath. And he looked at me. And he said, Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. And now I know the value of being a Christian. I promise you, Pastor. That I will follow God and I will keep on praying. 
And he kept on coming to church. Kept on coming to church. Kept on coming to church. We were not here that we were at that time, that time. The place was big, bigger than this place. And we keep on preaching to him. He said, I have to go and look for accommodation for him. He was sleeping with he was living with somebody. And to the glory of God, today is an accountant. He's gone back to his family. And he got a good job. And somebody saw me in Buddhas. He said, when last did you see your boy? I said, I've not seen him. He said, he's gone back to Cape Town. He said, he's now dressing like you. He wears suit. Where am I going? When God is about to do a new thing, he will send somebody to you. Today, I pray for you. God will send help to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will send help to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, a new door means God he will do new things. You will have a change of story. You will have a change of situation that your situation will be better. That man was living on the street. I brought him to church. I got him an accommodation to go and stay with somebody. And from there, today, he's standing on his own. In his own house. There's a change of story. There's a change of situation. So what is God telling us? God is telling us that whatever we are going through now will become past tense because God will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If we want to talk because of our time about a new dawn, one of the best experiences is Joseph. At the age of 17, God told Joseph, I will do a new thing. I will make you the head of your family. I will make you a provider. I will make you somebody. And Joseph believed it. He believed God. But his own brother now sold him out. They sold him to slavery. And Joseph kept on waiting, keep on trusting God. How many years did Joseph wait for God's word to come to pass? He waited for 13 years. From the age of 17, Joseph now came to the palace at the age of 30. Let's calculate it. How many years did he stay in Potiphar's house? Probably between the range of 10 to 11 years. For 11 years, he was a servant. And he interpreted the dream. He was, he was in the prison. God promised him, you are going to become prime minister. I will change your story. But instead of the story getting better, he was getting worse. From forty pounds house, now to the prison. And he was in the prison for two years. When he saw somebody that came from the, the king's palace, he said, oh, please mention my name before the king. And for two years, he did not remember him. But a day came, just like today, that the good news came. And they called for Joseph. I pray for you. Wherever your services, wherever your talents are needed, they will send for you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will send help to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will send somebody to you that will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Joseph was there in the morning he woke up and they came. Where is Joseph? Joseph came. They said the king wants you. He went to shave. He changed his garment. He put off the prison garment and put out a new garment. And he never returned to that prison. That garment, that prison garment, he did not wear it again. I pray for you this morning. I don't know the garment you have been wearing. I don't know what they have said about you in your family. 
I don't know the way you rose, the way you slept yesterday, and the way you woke up this morning. I don't know the dream that you have, but I pray for you this morning that the evil that that came that you rose up with you this morning, you will not sleep with it again in the mighty name of Jesus. The situation that have compounded you, that you are beginning to ask, where is your God? Today, you will never go back to that situation anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will do anything for you. Joseph, go to the palace. You will have said, oh, Joseph is already there. Yes, he was in the palace. But Joseph was still suffering one way. What is it? He has not seen his family. And remember that it interpreted the dream. There is going to be famine for seven years. So for seven years, he did not see his family. So Joseph was not a complete man. But suddenly, famine came. He now saw his family. He saw his brothers. They didn't know him, but he knew them. And he now showed himself to them when they returned. After two years. So Joseph waited for nine years again before he could see his father. Where am I going? It takes a microsecond. It takes one minute. It, takes, it can take one hour. It may be one day for God to change the story of a man. And let me let you know, for my 27 years in ministry, I can say one thing, that it takes a program to change the life of a devoted Christian. It takes one program, one program, one program. For every program that is done in this church is meant to change the life of somebody. And I decree over you, that this program will change your life. Amen. This program will change your situation. Amen. This program will change your story. Amen. The law will arise for you. And it will do a new thing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So a new dawn is often pregnant with so many possibilities. This program is pregnant with many things. I can say it as the Lord live it, that this program will give back to testimony for so many families in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Already some people already have testimony. <laughs> There's a woman that wanted to kill her husband this week. But God save her husband. They wanted to kill her husband. But God save her husband. When you put a call through, this is what my husband is going through. This is it. I call. And then when I come to the altar, <laughs> the Lord told me that. Because they began to attack me. So I came to the altar. God, what is the meaning of this? The Lord said they wanted to kill him. So they are coming to attack you. <laughs> but now it is time for them to be buried. There is somebody this week that prayed all the prayer that we prayed. And he had, he had his terrible dream. The person is not based here. The person is in England. And by reason of the dream that they had, he knew that the enemy were coming against him. So all the prayer, all the time we were praying, he was always there. Why? Because of what he saw. What a man sees determines his reaction. Well, for the ministers that see, I post all the people that are sending seed, sending offering. You see that Pam Stanley coming from England. Why? The reason why they saw is because of what they saw. They've never been to South Africa. But they saw something that told them something. I pray for you. Then the Lord will open your eyes. Yeah. As 
as a result of this program, the Lord will open your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that what you need for you to fulfill your destiny, the Lord will deliver to you in the mighty name of Jesus. A new dawn give birth to fulfillment of promises in our life. God has promised the children of Israel according to the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 29 to 30. Exodus chapter 12 verse 29 to 30 and verse 42. The children of Israel has been in, in a captivity for 430 years. One day, the Lord said, I'm going to set them free. He asked them to do communion. And that day, that in that night, the Lord slayed the firstborn of Egypt. And that night, he said, Pharaoh said they, sh they should go. I don't know the Pharaoh that has been holding you down. But as a result of this program, or this program of that is called a new dawn, I pray that the prison door shall open for you to come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every Pharaoh that has been holding you down, your God will appear to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. A new dawn is always preceded with a night. Before the morning will come, there's always a night. That's why the Bible says, weeping me a deal for the night by joy coming in the morning. So, I don't know how long your night has been. A night, night is not the time, below the law. Night is not the time, it's not always pleasant. At times, you may not be able to sleep at night. Particularly, I remember when I got married. There was nothing we eat. Then tomorrow, what are we going to eat? I don't know. God, what is it? So at that time, I have not learned how to trust God more. We have eaten today. I married my beautiful wife, but there is no food I can use to, to feed my wife. What are we going to eat tomorrow? I can't fast. But I, she's another person's daughter. I brought her to this. Why did you bring this young lady to this family? And I will not be able to sleep at night. Until one day, God told me, even thinking all night cannot solve your problem. What you need to do is to trust me. And I will say to the problem. And I will trust God. In the night when I start praying, pray, I will be worshiping God and trust God. I said, Lord, I don't know what we are going to do tomorrow, but tomorrow is in your hand. And lo and behold, around 6 a.m., Somebody will come and knock on my door. Good morning, sir. The Lord told me I should come and give you this money. <sighs> and many, God, I had my certificate. One day I told God, this my certificate is here. Just allow me to even go and work in this bakery. bakery. God told me no. Why? For the time that you are passing through your night, there is a lesson God wants you to learn. Difficult situation you are passing through, there is something God wants to, to, to teach you. God wants to teach you, number one, to depend on him. God wants to teach you to let you know that he is your source. God wants to teach you that to let you know that you have a great future. But that great future can never be without him. So God wants to teach you how to partner with him. You heard that the Jews say, you call on the name of Jesus. That is, partner with Jesus. God wants to bless you. God wants to answer your prayer. God wants to help you. God wants to save you. God wants to have mercy on you. But you need to partner with God. God wants to answer your prayers. God wants to do those things that he has promised you. But you need to be his partner. Beloved of the Lord, the night season is the night, is the time for spiritual warfare. It's the time to pray. At times you get to your bed, you will not be able to sleep because of trouble. God is saying unto you, come unto me. I want to take over your trouble. Come and surrender your pain unto me. Come and trust me. 
whether I will not make your life to be better. So, beloved of the law, a new dawn is the time of fulfillment of God's promises for your, our lives. So, that is why you and I need to trust him. Trust God. No matter what, he that come to the Lord will believe that he is and is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. So, in the morning, seek the Lord. In the afternoon, seek the Lord. In the evening, seek the Lord. At night, seek the Lord. When you seek the Lord, God will not disappoint you. So, I pray for you. God will not disappoint you. God will not disappoint you. Say, oh, pastor, everything that you are saying uh, is because you have not gone through it. Uh, only believe God. Man, can, There is no man that can help you, but there is a God in heaven that can help you. Man may be limited. Man may not be able, if you ask me for give you one, thousand, one million rand, I may not be able to give you. But if you ask me for 1,000 rand, I may be able to give you. But there is a God in heaven. There is nothing you ask him that he cannot give to you. But you must be able to grow to manage it. Some of us now, if God give us 1 million rand, we will never come to this church again. Some, they say, God, build me a house. God may build... Some, once God give you that car that you want, you will not come to God again. Oh, God, do this one for me. God, do this one for me. God will just be looking at you. If I give it to you, I will not see your back anymore. So God is saying to you, be my partner. Commit your life unto me. Let me be able to trust you that you are my son. Can God trust you? If you put one million rand in your hand today, we go see you again. Can God boast that you are my own? Beloved of the Lord. When we're young, when we're younger, we used to sing, if it is raining, we will serve God. If it is uh, during winter, we will serve God. During summer, we will serve God. When I have, I will have God. When I don't have, I will, not, I will serve God. But some... <laughs> Immediately you taste a little pleasure. You forget about God. But God is saying to you, you are the one that I need. It's not your money. So God wants your heart to be committed unto him. And when you, your heart is with the Lord, then you will do the things that God says. When God says, come, you say, yes, sir. This morning when I finished, bath, I went to bath. My wife said, why are you going to church early in the morning? So early, I said, ask God. Why? He told me, do. He said, I want you on the altar at this time. And I said, yes, sir. And you know one thing he told me again? He said, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., I want you to do prayer work around the church before the communion. I am going to break the communion from here. If you like, you can come and join me. If you want to come and join me. You have never done it before. You have never, things you have not done before. I have not done it that 6 p.m., I'll make the prayer work. I've not done many prayers. He said one hour, between six to seven, I want you to do prayer work around hope of glory. Why? It's a new dawn for this church. It's a new season for this church. A chapter is closing. And what is that chapter? The chapter of frustration, stagnation, barrenness, or fruitfulness. The chapter is closing in your life. And God is opening a new chapter. In the mighty name of Jesus. I close with this. One of my spiritual sons says, we're praying on Friday. I was here. And they were in the nations where they are. Some of you know. I don't call people my spiritual sons if I, they have not imparted their life. And that's why these seven days, I only invited one of them. Why? Because I prayed for them many years ago. I said, anywhere I go, I am just going there to open the door for you. As far as I go, you two will come with me. And one of them that, the day Pastor Peter Olawale said, I should lead prayer. He called one of the second, the second person called after me. It's my own spiritual son that gave his life to Christ in 1998. And after the promise, he said, Daddy, ah, Daddy, Daddy, 
the things that you taught us in that time. I want to thank God, sir. Where am I going? On Friday, we were praying here. And one of them said, Daddy, that was a time God said it went large our coast. I thought all for glory. We moved from this small room. We moved to the bigger room. We were using the two together. And we thought it was just physical. It is now I know what God meant. That is not just enlargement of hope or glory alone. It's enlargement of people's lives. That look at us now. I am in this nation. This person is in this nation. This person is in this nation. And all of us are occupying different positions in the house of God. So, your thought, the thought of man is limited. So, please, people, stop undermining yourself. Stop writing yourself off. God has bigger plans for your life. And you must enter into their in. So, beloved of the Lord, commit yourself unto the Lord. I want you to pray this morning. And what is your prayer? Lord, do a new thing in my life. I want to experience a new beginning. And the Lord will do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So close your eyes and cry unto the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, arise, O Lord, and do a new thing in my life. Open a new door. Send help to me, O Lord. Save me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Enlarge my coast, O Lord. What do you want God to do? Go ahead and pray to the Lord. Go ahead and pray to the Lord. Go ahead and pray to the Lord. Not do anything in my life. 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 Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. The Lord will do anything in our lives. The Lord will do anything in our lives in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will send help to us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will save us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will have mercy on us in the mighty name of Jesus. He will open our heaven. He will send help from above in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you that whatever has limited you before will no longer be able to limit you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our God. We worship and honor you, Lord. For in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. While we still bow down our head, our all eyes closed, if you have not known the Lord, there is no way he can help you. If you have not given your life to Christ, there is no way he can help you. If you are here, you want to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to help me. I want to surrender my life to you. Can't you just wave your hand above your head. You want to say, Lord Jesus, from today, I want to commit myself unto you. I want to give my life to you. Can't you just raise your hand above your head and I will pray for you. Is there anybody who not say, Lord Jesus, I want to give my life to you. That from today, I want you to help me. Is there anybody like that? Glory be to the Lord. Is there anybody like that? Glory be to the Lord. Is there anybody like that? Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate you, Lord, because as many that you call unto yourself, there's no way they will be cast out. You are brought to your children or to yourself. Father, do not allow any force to cast them out in Jesus' name. Forgive them and cleanse them with your blood in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, from today, make them your own in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because of answer. For in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us today's our thanksgiving. Before we call out those that are giving their, their are celebrating their birthday, I want us to rise on our feet and just say, I want you with your own mouth. I want you to say thank you to the Lord. With your own mouth, just say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my home. I thank you for where I am. I thank you for where you are taking him. I thank you, O oh Lord. I appreciate you. I honor you, Lord. Just sit down and I thank you. Just go ahead and just say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything that you have done for me. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be glorified. Thank you for everything that you have done for me. Just say thank you in your own mouth. 
Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Say thank you to the Lord. Just say, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, Abong. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yabonga, oh Lord. Thank you, our God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you, Lord. Lord, we honor you. We adore you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord. We worship and honor you, Lord. For in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Anybody that is celebrating that the choir is going to sing for us now? If there's anybody that you're celebrating your birthday, August, you were born in August, or you got married in August, or there's something that is very important to you the month of August, as we begin to sing, then you dance to the front. And then we we'll rejoice together. Even children that are born in August, Please, they will come just dance to the front so that we can 